Tonight we are dining at Disney's brand new restaurant, Summer House on the Lake, here in Disney Springs. I'm super excited. I've heard really great things. Everything looks amazing. I'm excited. Are you excited? They also have cookies, so yes, you better believe I'm excited. Let's go eat some yummy food. on the lake is actually a chain restaurant. Um, however, this is the only summer house on the lake. All the rest of them are just summer house. They serve California inspired entrees and food. Honestly, everything on the menu looks amazing. We might have to come back a few times because there's simply too many things that I want to try. The inside of this restaurant is beautiful. It has very laid back, kind of, kind of beachy, but kind of upscale vibes. The chairs are really beautiful, the table like furnishings are really, like the, the settings, the table settings are beautiful. I'm very excited to go check out this cookie bar later, more on that later. But yeah, this is, so far, very good impressions. You're gonna hear me use the word beautiful like probably so many times in this video because everything is just presented really beautifully. The restaurant is beautiful. But for my drink, I got the Tropical Dreams. It's sunny vodka, lime, and habanero honey. That sounded intriguing to me. And it's got this beautiful flower on top. Oh my gosh. Wow, that is so smooth, but you really can taste all of those flavors. That honey, that habanero honey, like that's what gives it so much smoothness, but then you get that kind of kick in the back for the habanero. That is a fantastic cocktail. Yum. Summer House on the Lake is casual dining, so it's not very upscale, even though it seems a little bit upscale, like they do have cloth napkins, things like that. But basically what I'm reading from the My Disney Experience app, savor California style cuisine and breezy beach vibes at this lively lakeside eatery where summer never ends. Step into an inviting restaurant reminiscent of a beach house. So yeah, it's very beachy in here, but it doesn't seem stuffy. What I also really love is that they do also serve weekend brunch from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So I definitely think that this could be a great option for brunch. I know Homecoming also does brunch, so that could be a great backup if you're not able to get Homecoming because that can be a very, very hard reservation to come by. House of Blues also does brunch. So there's definitely lots of options, and I really love that they have another place that you can try to get a reservation for because they are very hard to come by. For my drink, I ended up getting the Endless Summer Old Fashioned. It's Brothers Bond Whiskey, Lemon Demerara, and Orange Bitters. That's a great old fashioned. It is a little sweeter than most old fashions, but the bourbon is a really good quality bourbon. You can really taste it. But what I like about this, especially if you haven't had a lot of old fashions, you don't get that traditional like back of the throat burn like a bunch of old fashions. It's definitely a much nicer, not as uh, mean to the, the palate, if you will, but you can taste the nice freshness from the lemon demerara syrup in it. And then the orange bitters just give it a little nice sweetness as well, but also that kind of bitterness because bitters. I also tried Kayla's drink, it's so good. That habanero honey, I want that on everything. For starters, they have a ton of fantastic options. Uh, two of their most popular are the jalapeno cornbread and the cheesy dream puffs. However, she said those do sell out really fast. So I would say if those are high on your list, you probably need to get here earlier in the day. We got the potato salad deviled eggs and their signature guacamole. I'm gonna try the deviled eggs. Our gallon's gonna give this guac a try. But these look so, again, very beautiful, very fancy. We've been on a big deviled egg kick lately, so I don't want the leaves. There we go. That is bomb. Wow, that potato salad on top is delicious. I love that. All right, let's give this guacamole 
a try. The guacamole also does come with pico de gallo, uh, salsa verde, and the name of the other one. I don't remember. That's very good. It's very fresh. The tortilla chips are nice and salty. I do like it. So everything is so like fresh in flavor so far. I'm very, very impressed. Something that's really cool, so I did mention that this is technically a chain restaurant. However, each one has a slightly different menu because they pride themselves on the fact that they like to use a lot of local ingredients in their food. And honestly, you can tell. You can you can taste the difference. It's very good. It makes me really excited to try our entrees. I know this is a weird thing to say, but this guacamole, yes, that it was like $16, but this is like probably one of the best portions of guacamole I think I've had. For the two of us, like we almost couldn't finish it. There was so much, so much. The other sauces that come with it, like the salsa verde and the pico, are just as good as the guac. This could easily be shareable between four or six people, like easily, but this is very good. I'm almost, almost too full for my entree, but I am excited to try my tacos. Guys, my tacos are here and look, more guacamole. <laughs> I got the chicken tacos. This is a great, Portion. There's a lot of food. I'm actually already kind of full. We'll see if I can finish these, but these tacos look quite delish. Oh no, I'm already. Oh no, oh no, oh no. It's already falling out. Okay. So I know it's kind of weird to say, but the flavors of that remind me a lot of Satuli Canteen with like the cabbage, the lot, or the coleslaw, the lime, the chicken, the way that the chicken is charred and seasoned. That's a pretty good taco. I think these are like a type of corn tortilla. So just be aware that if you don't like corn tortillas, this I, I believe is a corn tortilla, but it is really good. For my entree, I got the chicken strips. It's technically called a picnic fried chicken basket, boneless white meat slaw, hickory barbecue sauce, which I'm stoked about, and french fries. Our server also said that there's like some red pepper flakes within the batter of the, the breading that they do on these chicken. This is also a really big portion. It is a little bit of a pricier entree, not the most expensive by any means, it's $24. Let's give these guys a go. You can taste, again, just how fresh everything is. I'm sure they're probably cooked like in bulk as big as this restaurant is, but truly like it's, everything just tastes so fresh. But honestly, the star is this barbecue sauce. It's so good. Let's try these french fries. That is a good fry. Nice and salty. I would recommend. Okay, I need to talk about these chicken strips more because these things are so delicious. The breading on them is nice and crispy. I don't know how they do this with some kind of witchcraft or sorcery, I guess, but the inside, the meat is so tender and juicy, but the outside is so crispy. It's also got some kick to it. So our server said there's like some red pepper flakes in the breading. You can definitely taste it. I also think there's a little bit of heat in the barbecue sauce as well. Not crazy spicy, I don't think, but you can taste the buttermilk in the breading. What I love is there's a lot of black pepper in the breading and they, my mom makes homemade chicken strips and they taste just like my mom's. And I think that's why I love these so much. They're so good. Another thing that just made those chicken tenders even more impressive is that they're gluten-free. We heard the bartender talking about them. I'm shocked that those were gluten-free. I have no idea. And the fish tacos are also gluten-free. Kayla didn't get fish tacos, she got the chicken tacos. But what I also love is that it says right on their menu that most of their items can be made gluten-free and to just ask for it. So if you are someone that is gluten-free, I think this would be a great, great choice because those chicken tenders were amazing and I would have never guessed it. This is something I 
thing I really love about Disney in general is how much attention they pay to special dietary needs. If you are someone who, like, we don't necessarily have that, but if you are someone visiting Disney with special dietary needs, whether that be something like gluten-free or plant-based diets or whatever, don't be afraid to ask your server and don't be afraid to try places because a lot of times, even if it's not on the menu, they'll bring the chefs out to talk to you and figure out what you can and can't eat and they're very, very, very attentive to that. And that's one of my favorite things about dining at Disney is because, I mean, really anybody can come and enjoy and not have to worry about whether they can or cannot eat something. So I am very impressed by this so far. Um, you guys are going to laugh at the ridiculous amount of cookies that we just ordered. Which, by the way, they have the cookie bar. They have the cookie bar that is walk-up and you can just go and order cookies. But if you are dining here, you can also order cookies from the cookie bar. They have a ton of different ones that sound so good. So we ordered a whole bunch that we're gonna try. Don't worry, we're not gonna eat like the whole cookie. We're gonna take some of it home, but we are gonna try it and let you know what we think. But they also have other things besides cookies. We got, there's like a Rice Krispie treat. They have cakes. They got all kinds of good stuff, so. I love this restaurant. It's really good. Are we having dessert? Yes. If you know anything about me, I love cookies. He's the cookie connoisseur. I am the officially unofficial cookie connoisseur. Also, if you missed the cookie connoisseur at Festival of the Holidays, we'll link that video in the description below. And if you want merch of cookie connoisseur, let us know in the comments. These cookies look so good. They look very fresh, homemade. I'm gonna try this sea salt chocolate chip. And the question that probably everybody is wondering is whether or not these are as good or better than Gideon's. Oh my god. That sea salt. You get that immediately. I think they are as good as Gideon's. They're entirely different cookies though. If you've had a Gideon's cookie, they're just very rich and you could simply not eat a whole one. These, they're just, they're so good. The chocolate is nice big chunks. The sea salt though, is honestly what makes these. We also got the oatmeal scotchery. What's the name of it? Oatmeal scotchy. Oatmeal scotchy. I love scotchery. Call me old man, I don't care. I love scotchery. Butterscotch. Butterscotch. Scotch That's right. Scotch are a totally different thing. <laughs> oh my god. Approved. 10 out of 10. There's so much butterscotch in these. <clears throat> so good. Okay, and I'm gonna try our more kind of unique cookie options. Uh, so this is a vegan snickerdoodle. So they had a vegan snickerdoodle and I think they had a gluten-free chocolate chip um, cookie. So again, I love that they have special, special options. Snickerdoodles are my absolute favorite kind of cookie and this one's really nice and soft and there's a ton of cinnamon sugar on there. That is a good snickerdoodle. It's got some of the soft chewiness that you might expect from like some types of sugar cookies are kind of like a gingerbread. That's really good though. And then we got the brown sugar uh, rice krispie treat. Brown butter. What did I say? Brown sugar. Oh, brown butter rice krispie. Which I think this is basically kind of just like a regular rice krispie. But it looks amazing. I almost said a bad word. That's so good. That is the best. That's crispy. You need to try that. You said this is the best rice crispy treat you've ever had? Yes. It takes a minute. 
it's so light. It's so good. Because a lot of Rice Krispie treats, they're so dense, but like the marshmallow, I think they made this marshmallow. You get that like nice caramely flavor from the brown butter, but it's so light, like light and airy. What you want a Rice Krispie treat to taste like, wow. I just, I can't get over how light it is because it's a lot of Rice Krispie treats, like they just smash them and they're just dense and hard and like a rock. This is not that. The fact that you can get all of this walk up, I'm shocked. So I'm gonna say it. I personally like this better than Gideon's. It is not as overly indulgent as Gideon's. Gideon's is good, but it is like, you can only have like a bite or two and then like you're done because it's, it's too much. These have just as much flavor, but I could eat a whole cookie because they're just that good. I probably won't feel super sick afterwards. I, yeah, this, this is probably my new favorite restaurant in this experience, hands down. Like, everything has been absolutely amazing, and the fact that this just opened, and it's been that good, I'm very impressed. I will be back many times. <laughs> Amazing. I love that a lot. It felt like so many fresh ingredients meets home cooking. It, yeah. I, I loved <laughs> everything we got. The chicken tenders, which I thought were honestly going to be really basic, but they were anything but. It was pretty funny because the first one he had, he was like, they're okay, they're okay. And then he started eating the next one. He was like, actually, these are amazing. And he just like kept loving them more and more as he ate them. And honestly, those cookies are fantastic. The cookie bar, you can go anytime. You don't have to have a reservation here. The cookie bar is kind of like a separate thing. Yeah. You just can happen to also order the cookies if you have a dining reservation. We couldn't really get super up close. We're here during like Christmas time. So it's like, there's like a million people here right now. <laughs> so it was but, really busy, but the, just the cookie display like was so cute and pretty and they had so many options. I and the line was, was not that long. Yeah. I was shocked that that line was still A, still open, but yes. B, like, they still had so many options still available for you to choose from, yes. and you could still, even at almost 6 o'clock <laughs> on a Sunday, the weekend before Christmas, like, you could still go in too. I guarantee you, if you went to try to go to Gideon's right now, nope, I bet it. it's either A, a virtual queue that's probably four or five hours long, or B, the virtual queue is closed completely. But shh, keep this a secret so that it doesn't get like getting in. Anyways, overall, we had a fantastic night. It was a delicious meal. It actually, surprisingly, was not as expensive as I thought that it would be. I mean, it was pricey, don't get me wrong, but we got a lot of food for the amount of money that we paid, which I'm always pleased about. We hope you guys enjoyed following along, and that is all we have for you guys today. Now go create your ever after.